Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for Italy Awakens Week. My name is Mireille, and I'm very happy to welcome you to the virtual tour at Casa Milan, home of one of the most famous football clubs in the world, AC Milan. This virtual experience is part of the Tickets Awakening Weeks, which is a six-week celebration of the reopening of over 100 museums and attractions in six countries around the world. And these venues have worked day and night to reimagine their experiences and introduce new hygiene measures to make it safe for you to visit again. And now these venues are rolling out the welcome mat with these online experiences for those who aren't able or willing to travel yet, but still want to experience and reawaken cultural venues worldwide. Uh, we will start the experience at Casa Milan very soon now, but as people are still joining, uh, I'll kick us off by sharing some logistical info about what to expect and how to use Zoom. Um, if you have any questions for the presenter, you can submit them through the Q&A button at the bottom in the center of the Zoom window. And you will have the opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation. So feel free to send them through and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. Uh, you can also vote on your favorite questions by giving uh, a thumbs up so that we ask the best questions first. This is a Zoom webinar, so your camera will not be on, but you can use the chat to communicate with fellow attendees and the speakers. Uh, so you can, for instance, share where you're joining us from, or you can leave your reactions during the session by using the chat to message all panelists and attendees. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties, please use the chat to send a message to all panelists, and we will try to help out as soon as possible. And if you have trouble with the audio, uh, usually leaving and rejoining this webinar is often the easiest uh, way to fix the problem. And then finally, this presentation will be recorded and we will be sh sending the recording to all registrants in the coming weeks. And now, without further ado, I'm very happy to hand over to our host for this virtual experience, Alessandro, who is about to transport us to the heart of the Rossoneri headquarters and share the memories and the many national and international trophies AC Milan won over the years. So Alessandro, when you're ready, the floor is yours. My name is Alessandro Tisis Bernacchi. Uh, I'm the venue director of uh, uh, Asimila. And uh, welcome to the uh, e journey, of course, of, uh, of our house, of our home, and uh, through, and you will see, of course, the whole history of, of the club. So, just starting from, uh, from here, on uh, my left hand side, you can see. Uh, exactly who was the founder, that is Herbert Kiki, that exactly 120 years ago he founded the, one of the most historical clubs in Italy and in the world. So far we are the second most winning club in uh, football uh, and of course our colors, red and black, are related to the fire and uh, the fear that black color invokes in our opponents. On my right hand side, you can see the statute of our club. But as I said before, it was founded 120 years ago. Uh, and the club was, was born as a, a football and cricket club. Because of course, Herbert Kipplina uh, was British. Uh, and of course, as soon as we started our history, we managed to win immediately our first trophy. It was a campionato in 1900. And of course, football in that period was a completely different sport comparing to what it's now. Here you can see exactly what I was saying before about the cricket, football and cricket club. And of course, the first color was blue of the shirt and uh, on the second stage uh, we had the classical rossonero color jumping of 120 years after and of course this is something extremely important for us for our club 
uh, for our players in terms of diversity, inclusion, in terms of uh, globality as well. Of course, Black Lives Matter is something that uh, we really uh, focus and, uh, and, uh, and care. Uh, although we are speaking about football club, we are also talking about a media global company in terms of communication and uh, definitely uh, racism can find a field to grow in our environment, in our club. So it's something that we really care and we really matter from this point of view. This matter. Just moving slowly to the um, history, uh, the first years of life uh, with, uh, during the First World War and uh, to the Second World War, uh, the club uh, managed to win some national trophies. But of course, the legacy and the heritage that AC Milan is leading us today it comes exactly from 1950, 1951. Well, of course, we are having the first uh, international players playing for Milan. We have uh, uh, the Maldini dynasty just starting in AC Milan with uh, Cesare Maldini. And of course, with uh, the three Swedish players um, that they did the trio of Grenoli. So with the most famous of them that was uh, uh, leader, of course, that in the 70s and 80s he will become as well the uh, trainer of AC Milan too. Just moving to the um, 60s and 70s slowly, of course, we can see, for example, here we have the uh, jersey of our Capitano, Franco Baresi, that uh, uh, as a jersey and as a number, um, have been retired. Not any other new player playing for AC Milan will wear this number again. So he's our Capitano and he will last forever as Capitano of AC Milan. He never changed the club, like also another top player like Paolo Maldini. So we identify also um, our club through some icons they just play for the whole sport entire life in the same club without never change, changing jersey. And of course, just moving to 62 63 is where a similar becomes really international because we are start winning the national cups and the Copa de Campion. It was not yet the Champions League, but it was. The Copa de Campeones in 62-63, we won in Wembley against Benfica with two goals of uh, uh, Altafini and Oriun, the player, of course. And here where you see some uh, gadgets of, uh, that belong to the team. Just moving to Red Cup, because we managed to win especially two in a row. 68-69, so not so far from uh, 62-63, we have fantastic victory against Ajax. It was playing a top football in the period with three goals of Kirino Pratt. So we really identify, again, players now from the 60s and 70s that they never change jersey also this time. And of course, the period from 69, 70 to 80 was not full of victories, except, except for the Scudetto della Stella in 78, 79. The Scudetto della Stella means that every 10 campionato, every 10 campionato that we win, of course, we get a star in our jersey. And of course, in uh, uh, 78 79 was our 10th championship. In total, now we have 18. And of course, is where Franco Baresi is only 18 years old. He started with us when he was 16, more than 16 almost, and he finished his career with us. And after this, of course, we just arrived to the Berlusconi era. Here you have a replica of uh, the helicopter when uh, 1986, President Berlusconi took the 
ownership of the club. He just arrived in the center of Milan in Arena Civica with a helicopter that in terms of communication was something extraordinary in that period. So it was really something unbelievable. Uh, just moving to the era of many glories, many caps winning the world, where of course we have a mix of fantastic Italian players with uh, um, the support of the three Dutch players, Gullit, Van Basten and Rijkaard initially, and uh, the um, trainer, Saki, that changed completely the um, football and the way how Italian football was, was perceived abroad. And among all these players, and this fantastic glory, as I said, uh, um, the Berlusconi era, we had a great mix of Italian talents uh, uh, with uh, fantastic Dutch players like Van Basten, Gullit and Rijkaard. In all of this, of course, I have, I can say, I'm proud to introduce a colleague, but he's an icon. He's Daniele Massaro. He scored two goals in the final in 1994 in Athens against Barcelona. So he did a doppietta. And my question to Daniele, uh, and I feel always so excited to ask is how do you feel scoring two goals in a final? Ciao everyone. Uh, okay, here I start my career in AC Milan. Uh, it's my dream. When I was a child, uh, it's a dream. Well, I wore the jersey AC Milan. Uh, no, no. My second skin is red and blue. Uh, this is the difference. I start uh, play soccer in, in the street. I finish my career with uh, two champions, with uh, a Coppa dei Campioni, many Scudetti. Thank you so much for AC Milan for this opportunity. Uh, sorry, I have a question for you. Please. How many players scored two goals in the final? I need to check my Google, okay, it but it is Not okay. too much, but I scored two goals I know. In, in the final. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, thank you, AC Milan, because I won everything with this, this jersey. It's my pleasure, my honor play for 10 years AC Milan. My team. This is my house, not Casa Milan. This is my house. I have had so pleasure staying the history in AC Milan story. Thank you, Daniele. Thank you so much. And I can say... See you later, maybe. Uh, uh, bravo. And I have seen him, actually, he has for reality a Rossonero skin, 100%, because I saw him by the pool and his Rossonero, with the Rossonero stripes. So, uh, after I think this good surprise, because of course we are, are speaking about one of the icons of AC Milan, and uh, it's a matter of fact that um, a doppietta, so two goals in a row in a final, is not something that happens on a daily basis. And so you can see how also our players, they become after this one asset. So they work for Milan, they are our colleagues. And this is really a closeness to the, to the club that uh, we work for and we represent as ambassadors. So just moving a little bit further, again in a row, we have our second uh, Champions League final in the, in the 90s uh, against Benfica. 1-0 with a fantastic goal of Frank Rijkaard. And just moving to maybe the most beautiful part of uh, our museum. Of course, here you see the final in Athens against Barcelona, where uh, Daniele scored two goals, where Sabicevic, Il Genio, scored a fantastic goal from uh, the right hand side uh, of, uh, of the goal post of the Spanish goalkeeper. And here is Daniele, but look still the same because still very young i would say and of course during this period we are just having our uh, victories as well in italy so with so many players except the dutch players as i said before a mix of italians so maldini paolo maldini 
uh, just keeping with his dynasty after Cesare, his father, uh, Donadoni, Ancelotti, that in a second, um, in, the, um, nine, in the 90s and 2000s, he will become the trainer of Milan. And of course, with Berlusconi and uh, um, Adriano Galliani and his famous tie. Also, if you will go on YouTube and, and, and you will manage to see, we'll try to see some uh, videos of Milan in this period. Always the same suit and the same tie as a good luck, of course, as a purpose of good luck. And just uh, uh, moving in uh, uh, 2006 and 2007 with our last Champions League uh, in Athens, again, 1994-95 and 2006-2007, when we defeat Liverpool in the final 2-1 with the uh, uh, doppietta of uh, Filippo Inzaghi. But it was, again, a fantastic Milan and a very strong Milan, different than the first one. So Inzaghi, Sedorf, Maldini again, Nesta, Kaká, another Ballon d'Or. And just moving there, of course, we arrive in 2013 and 14, where we open Casa Milan, our headquarters, and of course now, we are just uh, preparing the future in order to win more cups and extend the row of victories, occupying more space and square meters in the museum. But please. Here you have the most beautiful area with extremely high impact. I believe that we don't need to speak here or to say what, but only to have a look to see is a fantastic vision. So please enjoy these 30 seconds of silence. The museum is divided, and especially this area, in, uh, uh, on the right-hand side, you have the national cups and victories, so Scudetto, Supercoppa Italiana, Coppa Italia, and on the left-hand side, the international ones. So seven Champions League, uh, World Cups, Coppa delle Coppe, when it was still uh, a tournament that now doesn't exist anymore. Uh, however, here you see exactly what we have done the last uh, 30 years of life, uh, uh, 35 years of life from the 60s to, to 2007. Um, on top of these cups, of course, there are seven. Only one is um, authentic for the reason that uh, uh, UEFA, it gives the cup, the authentic cup, every five victories. So we have it, Real has it, some other teams, they will achieve it as well. Uh, but it's a fantastic feeling just to step here inside. So I hope very soon that you will manage to be part of this experience and touch, especially uh, with uh, being here, our cups and our victories. In the middle of uh, um, the room, we have the biggest replica in the world of, uh, of the Champions League. Uh, so when the museum is full of people, here you have a long queue just taking pictures, of course. But definitely, this is a feeling that you need to experience. So you need to visit this area just to understand what I'm talking about. Just walking through our CAPS heritage and legacy for the future. Of course, today, Milan, uh, AC Milan as a club, uh, has a different approach uh, in terms also of uh, players, in terms also of how do we position uh, in the world of sport. 
uh, as I said before, uh, we are a sports team, but uh, we are also, we have the target to become a media global company. Uh, very um, attentive to caring activities, to diversity inclusion, as I said before. But of course, uh, really focus to have a very young team with a few experienced players. Just bear in mind that uh, we have one of the youngest teams in Serie A. Um, and some great assets, like, uh, for example, behind Marika is uh, one of the best goalkeepers in Europe and personal opinion in the world, that is Gianluigi Donnarumma. Teo Hernandez, he came from uh, Real Madrid and uh, during his first season he boosted in uh, Milan, our captain Romagnoli just after. Players like, uh, on the other hand side, like Benasser, that in the last uh, um, African Cup, he was voted as the best uh, player. And he's really an extremely clever and smart player in the midfield. Or Rebic, which never gives up. And this is, of course, what we are looking to have internally in our club, people that are committed and people that really believe and love this brand. One of the best uh, players in terms of uh, midfield is Hakan Chalhanoglu, top player. He's becoming a really, he's boosting during the last season. He's really something amazing and fantastic in terms of performance in the pitch. And of course, our new top player, Sandro Tonali. So again, a good mix of uh, Italian players and really strong international players. Sandro Tonali is one of the best prospects in Italy, extremely young, extremely committed. And this is what we said before about the heritage and the dynasty of uh, Baresi, Maldini, Massaro and so on. So players like Tonali, they decided to join our club because they are deeply inside AC Milan lovers, fans and supporters. So still, we have romance. And this is extremely important also to, for, to communicate to our audience today. And last but not least, of course, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Fantastic. No words about this athlete, about uh, his leadership, so about his ability to develop and help young talents in the pitch, developing them to become really fantastic top players that perform under pressure. I would move to a fantastic area again, the second, according to my view, most beautiful area. So here you have the um, room, the venue of Ballon d'Or, si palloni d'oro. Uh, we can start from uh, Van Basten to Ruth Gullit, to players like Cacao, George Weah. The last 40 years we have seen uh, these many Ballon d'Ors, plus hundreds and hundreds of really top players playing for their national teams. Marco Van Basten, honestly, Il Cigno di Utrecht, one of the best strikers around the globe. He scored goals in final in 1988 with his uh, national team. And uh, he was really, we have so great memories linked to Marco Van Basten is really the number nine per definition. In terms of style, in terms of approaching the pitch, in terms of class, in terms of movements. So really a gentleman from this point of view as well. Or George Wea, a pure diamond. A player that, of course, just to 
to understand that we are talking about players with great leadership. Now he's the president of Liberia. So that means that in the pitch uh, was definitely, his personality was outstanding. So we are speaking not only about athletes and footballers, but also about people that they are able to influence in future and to become or coaches or presidents of their country in this case. But bear in mind that we have many former Similan players that now they train other teams uh, from uh, Oddo to Pirlo to Sedorf to Inzaghi and I'm sure there are many more in this case. How not to mention also Andriy Shevchenko, which is also now a trainer as well of Ukraine. What to say about Sheva? He's still really deep Milanista. Very often he's here at Casa Milan. He follows the team. And how to forget his eyes during the um, penalty kick against Juventus in 2003 in the Old Trafford final. So really this heritage is something and the legacy that these players, they have in the club is something astonishing. And of course, Kaká. Two thousand and seven, fantastic season, and Champions League final in Athens again. Really great memories. And what we are doing now is, of course, to develop the club to uh, achieve uh, cups and victories in future as well. But because we like. We like to show you and let you, allow you to touch the cup, please. We're in the San Siro bench. The San Siro bench, we have one person that lifted the cup in the past. You met Daniele 15 minutes ago, and this is a cup. This is the Champions League. He lifted. I have personally a picture with Daniele. We are lifting together in the office the cup, and I was shaking because I was excited, of course, but can you imagine to be here? Because if you will come here, you can touch the cup. And you can see Daniel as well, because usually he's here with us. A bellissima. And it's not heavy, it's not heavy. So, I believe depends, it's, it depends. 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 If you have played for 90 minutes uh, against uh, Kuman uh, and uh, Ferrer, if I remember well. Against Barcelona. The game is to the top. It's. We play very, very good. There are 26 years, but it's like I feel like it was yesterday, honestly. I can tell you. Oh. <laughs> and we lost a connection again, but um, I'm sure they are aware of this and that they will return to, the, to this uh, live event as soon as possible. And then we can start asking the questions. I've seen many questions coming in actually. Some of them are in the chat box. And uh, of course you can use the Q&A. Um, Okay, Action here we are. In the Zoom. Yes, you, you return. Yes, yes. Okay, I think you just need to flip your, um, the phone, Marika, if you can flip the phone, like, Giro to, the left. to the left. Okay. Yes, all right. So I was just telling that, uh, that there are many questions coming in. But first okay. of all, uh, thank you, Alessandro, for uh, this wonderful tour and this trip down memory lane. I could see in the comments that some people really got emotional, especially when we ah, entered, positive. <laughs> when we entered the, the trophy room, let's say. And then of course, uh, a special welcome to Daniela. Thank you for joining this uh, virtual experience with us. I think a lot of people are very excited that you could join this tour. And so people, I would like uh, to ask, 
you know, if you have questions for Daniela, please uh, leave them in the Q and A, and then uh, and also vote for your favorite questions so we can uh, ask the best uh, questions first. So when the two of you are ready to answer the questions, I will start with asking the most favorite ones. Um, so actually, the first one is for Daniela. Uh, one of the most memorable wins was the 94 Champions Cup win versus Barca, Barca. What was it like preparing the game without Baresi and Costa Curta? And what effect did Cruyff's comment have before the game? Yeah, in that time, uh, we played against the, 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 best, uh, the best team in, in, in the world at that moment. Uh, no, no words. Only training, training, training in Milanello. They prepare the game. is perfect game against the best team in uh, in the world in that time. All right, very interesting. Um, and then a question for Alessandro. Do you think AC Milan will be on a higher position than AS Roma in the Italian league this season? Um, I definitely hope so, uh, that we will be. Um, of course, I can't predict the future, but we are always uh, extremely positive for the reason that the team now it is, um, is very solid. This is a matter of fact. So we played in, uh, against Bologna and uh, the performance was really, was really good. But, you know, the, um, the seasons, and although I'm not the person um, to say this, are really long and quite hard, but the team is, is well prepared. So we are confident that we will be above Roma, hopefully. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> wait and see. The season is very long still. It's very long. It's very long. <laughs> um, so um, can I ask Marika uh, if she can, is, is your camera still in landscape instead of portrait? Puoi girare la telecamera. Yeah, much better. Super. Thank you. Okay. No, we, so, said, we said Marika to uh, take us uh, from the ballet and the ball, because, okay, <laughs> after, uh, especially me, uh, during quarantine, I just gave three, four kilos that I need to hide somehow. Ah, okay. Now I get it. <laughs> so uh, actually a question for uh, maybe a nice one for both of you. Do yes. you think, do you think Francesco Totti was better than Ibrahimovic? Okay, I think, okay, now oh, you, okay, I, thank you so much uh, for this journey. See you next year. Uh, and uh, please, please, I mean, Francesco Totti maybe is, uh, is one of the top, top, top Italian players, 100%. He's really pure talent and an icon, especially in Rome. Uh, but Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, uh, what to say about Zlatan? You talked about the, the, the two. Two fantastic top, top players. players. Top players. Two top players. Okay. Two top players. okay. But I'm so happy Francesco Totti is Italian. Bravo, Italian. bravo, bravo. He won the World Cup. You bravo. <laughs> bravo, absolutely. <laughs> shall, I, shall I continue with the next question then? <laughs> if, if, if it's related to Roma, maybe no. Well, let's, let's talk about this. Yes, <laughs> yes, bravo. Okay, okay. Um, uh, a question. Uh, is there a game that AC Milan lost, but was still a great day game or played really well? Mm. It is. It, if I can, uh, it, it is. I believe we played one of the most beautiful games against Liverpool in Turkey, the final. First half, fantastic. Second half, not so beautiful and we lost the cup. But it was one of the best games Milan play ever, played ever. This is sport. This is sport. <laughs> but we won oh. two years after. Two years later, we won in Athens against the same team. Okay. Uh, then we have a question for Daniela. Um, which, uh, who's been the best player you played? Uh, which has been the best player you played? Ah, okay. Who's the best player you played with? Albertini or Van Basten? Sorry. <laughs> Marco Mambasso. <laughs> 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 Against Diego Armando Maradona. Wow. 
Okay. And and when we are talking about Van Basten, I mean, we had, of course, Van Basten, Rijkaard and Gulit at the same time, when you, and also when, of course, during your time. What were your best memories playing with them? Or are there, like, um, great moments that you shared with them or are special? We played with the top player. Unfortunately, I play not too much with with Martin because uh, he was a career uh, 20 years old. Uh, I played uh, with uh, uh, Rude for uh, three years and uh, Rijka more. But um, I spent uh, and uh, I learned too, too much from Marco Mambasta because for me he's the top player, uh, the top striker in the world. Mm. Nice. And then, actually, when for Daniela again, um, when you were a little kid, who was your hero back then, back in the days? Um, John Cruyff, because I played in, uh, uh, I would say, in this oratorio. Uh, in the school, in the, in the, um, uh, oh, in the church. In the church. Mm. Uh, I played with, um, with my jersey in uh, 14, number 14. 14. Uh, the same, uh, the same hair, uh, my idol. And Fortunately, I play um, the next, the next, uh, and continue the, the, the story, uh, John Cruyff and Marco Lombardi. Ah, nice. And, and if you uh, now have to decide which, which player would you, from today, is the best player you, uh, you find playing on the soccer field? Uh, for me now, the best player is uh, Messi. Yeah, okay. And then uh, Paolo wants to know, Daniela, do you still play football with the AC Milan Glories during your spare time? I play with the Glories. Yeah, with yeah, the glory. Glory. Uh, maybe we start the new, the new project, the new program for the legend, uh, for charity. I would like to uh, travel a lot, to play a lot in, uh, in, in the world for, uh, for charity with my, my colleague, my, my legend. My team, uh, AC Milan against uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, because I play many times in for uh, for charity with legend. All right, and then there is a person that is wondering how big that Champions League replica is of the cup. Oh, I, I will let you know shortly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question for you, Alessandro: How Please. is it? to work for for Milan and Ooh. was it your favorite team when you were a child? Uh, when I was, because I'm half Greek, half Italian, so my favorite team was I Athens when I was a child. But as soon as I remember um, Italian football, I was crazy and mad about Milan. So when I joined Milan, but still today, after almost one year, it's a dream, but it's really a dream because mm. it's, Fantastic. It's really fantastic. Okay. Um, Daniela, if you were playing today with personal jersey numbers, what number would you choose and why? Now for me, it's impossible to play in AC Milan because number 11 is busy. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, it's only number 11. I start in the match. Usually, I start in the match. <laughs> it doesn't matter, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, the quality, not the quantity. Ah, okay, but, okay. But I can tell you I have a question for you, because his nickname, when he was playing, is not a, it's just a statement, he was called Providenza Massaro, Massaro Providence. So what that means, that if the match was nil-nil or we are losing, last five minutes, this gentleman gets in, Strikes for was uh, for the tum tum very so Providenza Massaro in the bench five minutes also in derby in uh, I, I remember some games it's much like uh. <laughs> all right um you were the most powerful team in Europe for a time which other team is your biggest rival in Europe and why the question is for me. Well, okay. Either way. Uh, actually, the, um, we defeat uh, Real 5 0 
they were number one, we became number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the teams are always, the, I mean, Real, Barcelona, um, Bayern Munich, Monaco, Manchester United. Um, as, as far as you can see, we don't have other Italian teams in Europe so powerful like AC Milan is. Okay, um, I'm just looking at the chat box because there are also questions uh, in there. Uh, but we have a question from Norbert. Um, and it's a question for Daniela. What are your feelings about the extension of Donnarumma's con- contract? We will manage to keep him with us. You ask, you ask Paolo Maldini, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an ambassador. I don't work with uh, close to the, the powers. Um, I'm so sad because uh, Jack is a uh, very nice guy, very professional. But uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, the problem is uh, the, the procurator, the manager, uh, maybe. Because uh, Jack won't continue in, uh, in AC Milan, but it's not possible. All right. Um, and then I have a question. What is the most, m- for Daniela, and actually also for Alessandro, what is your most memorable match ever that AC Milan played? I remember the, the I remember uh, the, um, the first time when I, when I put the jersey in, in, in San Siro, but uh, always uh, Milan against Inter de Milan. Mm. I, yeah. I, I scored. I scored to one and ninety ninety third uh, minute. Minute. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Alessandro? Of course, of, oh. of course, two goal in the final. Of course. But, uh, of course. Uh, special special game in Milan uh, against uh, Inter de Milan. Uh, the second team in Milan. The second team. <laughs> okay. No. For, for me, is of course Milan Barcelona for nil in Athens. Uh, incredible memories. Incredible. And uh, the second one uh, um, is, of course, in Athens again, Milan Liverpool 2 1, because a few days after my son um, was born in that period. So I, have, I was so excited about the cup and about becoming a father. So it was really oof, fantastic week. Fantastic week. Unforgettable, I would say. Yeah, beautiful. And then for Daniela, what was it like for you to play under um, Johan Kraus as a coach? Because uh, the, the first game, the game in, uh, in Athens, I asked uh, John, please, I, I, I want your autograph. Uh, the first, not the last. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, and then Glenn wants to know, Daniela, when are, you going, when are we going to see you back in Malta? In Malta? Yeah. Not now in this time, I have many friends in Malta. I play golf in, in, in Malta, but uh, I spoke with my friend in Malta. Now the situation is not, not so good. I wait maybe one month. <laughs> because the weather after one month is very bad in Milan, but in Malta, too much better for play golf. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, and okay. then, uh, Alessandro, um, Luigi is asking if uh, there is a jersey of Kaka also in the, in the museum. Uh, absolutely, yes. There are two Kaka jerseys. Yeah, for the okay. Two, uh, yes. 100 scores, score. the goals, and also for the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, for, for so ah, there okay. are two, but it's one of the players that is really part of... Uh, uh, the heritage that the C Milan uh, has in terms of glory is playing, played for the club in the past. It's Ricardo Cacca. All right. And who scored the most goals for AC Milan? Who scored the most goals, most goals. for AC yeah. Milan? Who the top scorer? Oh, God. Nordal. 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 In the 50s. Oh, okay. That's a long time ago. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a question for Daniela. What did you felt inside when you played your last game for Milan? What was your feeling? 
Ultima partita. Ho finito la mia carriera in 1995 in the final in the, the, the Champions League against Ajax. Mm. My, my ah. last time. Not so good, but. Clyder. Okay. okay. Um, and on that, with that question, I think we are done with all the questions. Um, so I would like, first of all, to thank the two of you for uh, hosting this tour and uh, doing the Q&A. Again, thank you, Daniela, for joining uh, us with, uh, on this tour and the Q&A session. And um, I would like to thank also the audience for joining us for this Tickets Awakening Week's virtual experience. And as mentioned before, all the recordings of our Awakening Week's virtual experience including this one, will be made available online in the coming weeks. And then uh, if you're in Italy and you also want to uh, experience Italy reawakening online uh, or in person, uh, just visit the tickets.com slash blog slash awakening weeks for more information on all our awakening weeks around the world, including this one. And then thanks again. I think they left the call, but uh, um, thanks again for Casa Milan for arranging this wonderful tour. I think, yes, they're back again. I was just about to say, Alessandro and Daniela, that I would like to thank Casa Milan, uh, especially the two of you and Marika for uh, hosting this tour. And um, last but not least, of course, also the audience uh, for joining us. And we are looking forward to finding more ways to culture with you again soon. Thank so, you. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank Bye. you. Welcome. Always, everywhere, Forza Milan. Forza, Forza. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>